I recognize the House Minority Leader, Representative Candelora of the 86th. You're the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, I rise in opposition to this piece of legislation. And I'd like to start out by referencing our Commissioner of DECD, who um, obviously is charged with making sure the economic engine in the Connecticut keeps running. And he makes the remark that when I look back at the period from 2008 to 2018, we were in a self-reinforcing negative cycle and those are hard to break out of. My concern with this piece of legislation, like so many others that we've done here, is it creates that cycle and perpetuates it. Connecticut's economic cycle is in a sort of a break it, rinse it, and then repeat. You know, we're just finally coming out of some economic strength, and it's bills like this that help to break those cycles of growth. And it's not because we're giving employees a benefit, but it's the way in which the state of Connecticut does it. You know, we heard a lot from members on this side of the aisle that talked about the different perspectives of employers that they have throughout Connecticut and how this bill could impact it. We heard about nursing homes, we heard about daycares, we heard from our farmers, our PCA workers, our municipalities, our lifeguards, and when we start digging down and understanding these impacts, I think everybody sort of murmur and quietly says, I, don't, I didn't realize this bill impacts this particular business in this way. When paid sick was first done 10 years ago, 12 years ago, it only affected businesses of 50 or more in particular certain types of service businesses. We are now taking a giant leap and going to have it broad brush impact every business throughout the entire state of Connecticut. And, and I don't think people here appreciate or understand how it's going to affect them. And it's not just the five days off. We are prescribing the way in which businesses are going to give benefits to its employees. And to suggest that it's not already being done is a fallacy. Paid days off are being provided to employees. I know myself personally as an employer, I give people time off even if they contractually aren't entitled to it because it's the way things work. Especially coming out of COVID, I think our businesses recognize that we are in this together. And when government comes in and intrudes on that relationship, it could be devastating. I understand people here talk today how this is the panacea, people need these, this time off, you know, it's helping our, our mothers and families. I want to remind people, I was in this chamber when we did the MyCT savings, which was the retirement program that Connecticut had to have. It was going to be the savior for everybody for the retirement savings. We have 600,000 businesses that can qualify for MyCT savings. After all the money we've spent on that program, and I haven't even added up the hundreds of millions of dollars that are being put into that, we currently have, as of March 31st, 2024, 2,693 2 people in the state of Connecticut participating in that program. Wow. So did they really need it? Did the state of Connecticut, did these employees really need this program? I don't think so. I did not have constituents come to me saying, I need paid sick leave. They probably didn't come to me because they were already getting it. Same as these retirement benefits, yet we put this on the books and we intrude businesses. So all I've heard from companies is, what is this my CT savings? My employees forgot to opt out. How do I get them to opt out? It, is, it has become a regulatory nightmare for them. And I think it gets a little bit touchy for me personally because I, as an employer, administer these programs and I watch how it plays out. We already had a program in the state of Connecticut to address paid time off, and that's paid family medical leave. We're not even looking back to see if that program is working before we're already imposing another one now on businesses. And I just want to remind the chamber, paid family medical leave has a surplus as of, I think, the end of this year, it's going to be uh, hitting $700 million. $700 million 
we've take, taken out of employees' paychecks, stuck it into an account for a program that they had to have. That program should not be running surpluses. It should be breaking even every year. But it, it has now become a slush fund, and it's become a tax on our employees. And over a third of the applicants are being denied those benefits when they apply. Over a third. So if we want to fix something in Connecticut, we should be fixing a mandate that we've put onto everybody's paychecks that actually does what we intended was to give paid time off, which a third of them are not getting it. And so to pile on yet another program I think is confusing. I think it sends the wrong message both to employers and employees. I think this is going to be problematic as our nonprofits today thought they were exempt. They had no idea, some of them, when I spoke to them, that they are now going to have to implement this program. And it's you know, an hour for every 30 hours worked, but you get five days off. I, I just don't understand. Only in government can we make something that should be so simple, so complicated. So with that, I am opposing this legislation. And I have no question we'll be back here trying to fix it a year from now. Thank you.